Okay, okay. Um... I think it's time for me to start making meat stew. So, uh, overnight, while I did all of that mining, I managed to get my hands on, um, an additional perk point to spend, and I can go ahead and purchase Grandma because of the, uh, the modifications of my equipment, which allows me to make meat stew. And meat stew, as you can see here, is made out of raw meat, potato, ear of corn, animal fat, and boiled water. So, <clears throat> go ahead and get all of that stuff out of the chest, and we'll go ahead and make as many meat stew as I can. Just two. Not the best, but it'll do the job just fine. Um... Okay, with all of that done, I could also make vegetable stew, which is similar but different. It doesn't have any of the meat and the fat in it, but that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna put everything that I need into my inventory, and I'm going to hop down to the location where I'm going to uh, build the fort now, okay? So, like, I've been building stuff on the side for a long time, so let's just grab all of the necessary building blocks, the cobblestone, the wood, um, frame shapes as well, and some extra wood to make additional frame shapes. All right, you, get out of here. I do not need you. This is my property now. I'm building a base. All right, so we're right next to this little lake in the, the Navazgaz, um, map. And, um, the, the main reason that I'm here is because the land is flat right next to the lake, okay? Which makes it reasonably good, uh, a reasonably good place to, to build. So this is what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna show you the basic layout for what I'm doing, just so you can understand. And it starts with five blocks in a row, and then another five block row right next to it. So this is the lowest level, this is the basic shape for uh, the platform that I'm going to survive on, okay? Now, this is what's known as a fish hook base, so I need to make the hook, which starts by coming out five blocks and then placing a support beam. Um, I'm gonna need more of these frame shapes uh, if I'm gonna do this. I, I don't actually need all of these shapes. Okay, so then three and then another support beam. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it comes out another three? Or is it? Yeah, okay, so one more support beam, and uh, then we come over three, put a support beam, and then another three, there, and one, two, three, and there, we're done. Ooh, hey, look, a bird's nest. Okay, so this is the this is the basic. Um, I've gotten the placement of the blocks correct. That's the reason I'm using frame shapes here. A lot of these these frame shapes I'm gonna take back up in a moment. Um, but for now, I've got just basically the the most basic version of where everything needs to be in its proper place. So I'm gonna remove these blocks that represent where the actual support pillars go. Okay, and the way that this works is that you want. Um, a three vertical stack of cobblestone and then on top of that you can put uh, I'm gonna put wood on top of those and I'll probably use like so, uh, wooden cylinders just because they look more fancy and or pretty uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove these blocks between the support pillars okay all right just rotate this there we go okay now all I got to do is finish off the platform and or, well, not the platform, but the pathway. And there you go. That is the most basic version of the fort. The only thing I have left to do is to put the ladder on the back. So, one, two, three, and then four. And most importantly, I need a plate underneath that. So we'll come in here and we'll search, um, plate. And I want to use the basic one right here. And then I'm going to switch to advanced rotation, and I'm just going to switch this around constantly until it's underneath the ladder. There we go. All right, now, um, I won't, with that plate there, I will not accidentally get stuck underneath the ladder whenever I'm running to get onto it. Um, now this platform needs to be expanded a little bit with iron bars, but this is the, the basic gist of everything, and this is exactly where everything needs to be, uh, to be. You can see a whole bunch of cobblestone blocks up at the top of these, uh, pillars that, uh, in, improves structural integrity, so the, uh, the walk path will not fall and it will not, uh, come off. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much the basics of it. What I need to do now is head back to the base, 
um, and I need to get my hands on additional, uh, I, I need to get my hands on iron bars. But I also need a door, and I think I'm gonna need about three hatches, okay? So at least three wooden hatches. It, it helps if I can upgrade these hatches further. I'm gonna go ahead and make an iron one as well. Let's, uh, let's grab that stuff from the base that I need. All right, so now we'll switch to advanced rotation. And we're just gonna swap these iron bars around. If it wasn't for all of the mining I did, like I, like I said, the mining was super, super necessary. So we want to extend this out like so. Oh, whoops, I do not need to put iron bars there. I need to put just a normal wooden block right here because there's, a, there's gonna be a door going on this. I don't want anything to be able to, uh, Zombies can eventually spit. I don't want them spitting upward at my feet whenever I'm standing there. So. All right, let's run back around here. And let's put the the rest of the iron bars around here. Um, should I put another iron bar in there or not? The thing is, this, this base is built to, like, expand. I think I'm going to be a little bit conservative, but I'm not going to place iron bars where it's not necessary. And I'm going to just do the most necessary locations. Uh, because I, I want to be able to expand this base for the next Blood Moon. Which, actually, you know what? I, I don't even know that the next Blood Moon is going to happen, so forget it. I'm just going to go ahead and put all of the all of the iron bars in where it makes the most sense. Or where, where it's supposed to go, and I'm not going to worry about removing anything. Do you hear that? That's the sound of another airdrop. Oh, wow, that's really close. Uh, if I have time, I'll go ahead and grab that. Um, but for now, uh, let's switch back to simple rotation. Here we go. And we want to make basically a pair of doorways, okay? So put the iron bars here, like so. And then stack it up too high. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and slap down a frame shape just so I can stand on top of some stuff here. And I don't think that I have enough iron bars to get this done. I'll have to go back to the uh, the f furnaces or the forges that I have running in my base. So put those three in, and now I can come back around here and um, hold down R, switch to advanced rotation, put this where it belongs. My OCD demands that, it, uh, that the bars are all properly oriented to look similar. All right, so there we go. That is basically all of the iron bars. I'm gonna need, um, let's switch back to simple and put this last one in. It looks like I'm gonna need uh, three more iron bars to finish this off here. But I can now come in and I can put in the three hatches. The first one goes over the ladder in the back here. I shouldn't need that, but I'm, I'm putting it in just to be safe. Then one hatch right there facing towards me and then another hatch facing towards the walkway. All right, and with that, um, I can now put the door in over here. Just rotate that around properly. Okay, so that's in place. Now, uh, what I need most is some barbed wire. I don't know how many I need. I'm just going to make, I guess, 30. While those craft, I'm going to reinforce the supports. Okay, put that in. Perfect. All right, just got to wait on the last couple of plates to go in. So the reason that I'm placing these plate reinforcements on the support pillars is because in the unlikely event that the zombies take out any of the stone, the wood should help to ensure structural integrity. Now, that's not really going to be necessary for this first round of Blood Moon, but it's going to be necessary going forward in the future and everything. Okay, so... Um, with that done, let's go ahead and grab the last of the stuff from the base and finish it off. All right, here we go. Pop right upstairs. I've got the last, uh, the last of the iron bars. So let's go ahead and swap some of this out. There we go. Go ahead and put the bar where it belongs. I love the pixel hunting of making certain that I get this right. If I misplace a single iron bar, I have to remove it uh, the hard way. It takes a long time to remove. All right, with that done, there's one final thing to do. I need, was it a support? No, uh, a beam. That's not what it was. Oh, 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 it's right here. Pole. Okay, pole. So I want the corner pole, and if I... Uh, 
if, if I rotate this normally, yeah, I'm gonna have to switch to advanced rotation for this. So we're gonna rotate it around until it's right across the top there. We'll go ahead and slap that bad boy in. Um, we'll go ahead and... Ooh, you know what? Um, well... Okay, uh, I, I, I need to put one more beam in, so I'll, I'll do that first. Go ahead and close those. Ooh, gotta crouch to get through there. That's exactly the way it's supposed to do. Uh, switch back to advanced rotation. You do that by holding the R key to get that radial menu. Okay, there we go. Popped it in. Now, um, let's go ahead and come in here and take a look at what's going on here. So this is what's called a fishhook base, okay? The the zombies are going to try to... I, I hide up on that little caged area there with the iron bars. The zombies go up the ramp and around the curve, and they try to get to me. And there's ample space for me to shoot at the zombies and deal with them, okay? So it's basically exploiting the, uh, the zombies pathing an AI, and, and they are not very smart. They cannot go down like a particularly large maze or anything, so this is the most basic and short, short of distances possible. Um, they should not be able to reach this um, ladder on the back, but uh, the hatch is there for a good reason. They, um, they're going to come up around the J, and then onto uh, onto this platform. These two back-to-back -back hatches ensure that there's a decent amount of you know, material between them and myself. So they won't be able to just instantaneously reach me and get to me. Um, and this uh, piece of, uh, this, this this little pole here ensures that I can't get through if I don't crouch. And it also means that they won't be able to crawl through the space either. Presumably. Um, I've used this base more than once. And, and I didn't come up with this base either. I, I came up, uh, like, I, I found it online and I've been, you know, like, toying with it and learning it on my own. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, uh, repair this. This little, uh, pole allows me to step forward without actually falling out. And this one is, I, like, I have to be on top of keeping that repaired as well. So, um, also, we've got this, uh, these horizontal bars up at the top. These make it possible so the zombies, whenever they pile on top of each other, they won't get over the iron, the, the, the wall of iron bars. Now the last thing that I gotta do is I gotta repair this thing, or rather upgrade it. So this outside one is gonna get upgraded all the way to an iron hatch, which is the reason why I made an iron hatch. And this inner one, I'm just gonna upgrade it as far as I can without having an iron hatch. And there we go, that's done. We're also gonna go ahead and uh, repair, or well, reinforce this door as well, as best as possible. And that's pretty much it. The place is pretty much done. There's some fancy whistles and bangers that I could put on this place, but I don't have access to, like an auto sledge and whatnot. So instead, the last step is to put in um, barbed wire across the entire walk path. Now, the reason that I'm using barbed wire instead of something like wooden spike traps or whatever is specifically because... Um, Barbed wire is something that the zombies will walk through, but it will slow them down. They'll take a little bit of damage, not too much, but the main focus is that it's going to slow them down. You know what? I've got the time, and I've basically finished working on this fort. Let's go grab that airdrop. What do we have now? Ooh, hey, it's a pipe rifle bundle. That's not too bad. Um, You know, I think I'm going to leave that sealed for now. And because I've basically finished here, like, all of the work that I can do back at base, um, I picked up this mission here from Trader Joel for, like, buried supplies. Let's run and do this, um, before the Blood Moon hits. I think I'll be able to just get it in. Come on. Just a bit more. Buried supplies. That's some food. Not the best of material, but not, not... You could do worse. You could do worse. And like always, you open the buried supplies, and a bunch of uh, and a bunch of extra zombies decide to spawn. I think that there's one or two behind me as well. So, not close behind me, mind you. Sir, go away. I'm running out of time. It's 1800. The blood moon starts at um, 2200. I gotta get this done real fast. Okay, gonna get rid of this guy, and uh, then I'm gonna run back to Trader Joel and see if he's got anything for me in addition to the reward for um, my. For the reward for finishing this mission. Hello, Joel. It is your lucky day. Um, vitamins versus the cornbread recipe. I wonder which one is worth it. Okay, cool. Uh, what do you have in your inventory? I don't want to sell anything. Let's see if there's anything. I don't know. Ammo or a gun. 
Um, does he even have the... Ah, there it is. Ammo and weapons. Um, pipe pistol? No, I got a better handgun. I can't afford a hunting rifle, unfortunately. Yeah, there's basically nothing here. There's there's almost nothing here. Any Anything that I would really care to purchase, I can't really afford. So, um... The lever action rifle would be really amazing for this night, but that's 9,000 and I don't have that. So instead, let's just grab this sniper volume. Um, it reduces weapon sway. And let's buy this anvil because it's good for upgrading my um, my Thank forge. You, Not that it matters for the for the immediate for future. Um, let's also pick up a, a mission here. <laughs> Almost forgot. Um... Let's just do this clear zombie. I'm, I'm not even going to get to this, but I, let, let's just do it anyway. Okay, uh, I'm going to prepare my inventory, and I'm going to get myself out to that... Uh, I've got to get out to the tower. I'm running out of time. Okay, okay, here we go. I'm here in time. Okay, this place is all put together. I've got everything in my inventory that I need. The, um, the trap doors are closed. Um, the barbed wire is placed. Fort... Fort Apocalypse is done, basically. So, here I've got a pipe rifle. Um, I've got my handgun, my pistol. It's better than a pipe pistol. So much better than a pipe pistol. Um, I've also got some vitamins and um, some food. So, go ahead and reload these weapons, or load them up for the first time, I suppose. Ugh, I hate pipe rifles. They take so long to load. All right, so, um, you know what? While we're waiting, let me let me go over the way that I've modified these things. So, um, the handgun has a trigger group uh, full auto mod, and the main reason why I have this on is because it increases range damage. And that's really more or less the only reason, not necessarily because um, it makes it fire faster. Meanwhile, this pipe rifle, I have in, uh, installed a bipod mod, which increases handling shooting down the sights, and um, this barrel extender, which increases damage when aiming down the sights as well. So, um, just overall improving it. I also have this pipe shotgun, which I realized I did not grab any ammo for. <laughs> I have screwed up there. Um, I've also got vitamins, um, first aid bandages, which I had a first aid kit, but I don't. Um, I've also got painkillers and, and a plaster cast and everything. Um, and I, I have a, a pipe baton as well as my normal spear, so I uh, have everything that I need. Uh, I have red tea, which will increase my uh, my digestion efficiency. Basically, red tea ensures that you don't, like, burn through your food as fast that you've eaten. Um, I've also got plenty of pipes in order to repair my weapons. Um, let's go ahead and put my, uh, my, my baton there. Let's go ahead and repair it. Um... Yeah, I've also got repair kits specifically to fix my uh, my handgun, and uh, lucky me, I'm not even gonna keep that shotgun on my hotbar. I've also got my uh, my hatchet here so that I can continue to patch up the uh, the wooden bar right above the hatch uh, the hatches there. So, all right, so I am four, five, uh, three, two in-game minutes away. All right, so I mean. I don't know that I'm ready for this, but here we go. Um, it is Blood Moon time. Let's go ahead and get a bite to eat. Let's drink some of that red tea, and most importantly, let's drink these. Vi uh, let's eat these vitamins so that I can avoid getting an infection. Don't think I will over this night, but you can never be too careful. Ah, crap. I forgot. Every single time, you, uh, every single time you modify, uh, the, change the mods on a gun, you have to reload it. It's uh, inconvenient, to say the least. Okay, this, um... Let's just, let's use the handgun. It works faster. That rifle is just trash. Really wish I had a better one. Oh my god, you know what I just realized? I had a pipe machine gun that I forgot about. That was sitting around in... Uh, well, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Oh my word. His head popped off like a zit. Oh! How on earth did you hit me? I wasn't even that close to you. This is one of the problems with the, uh, the double, um, trapdoor situation. But the, be the beautiful thing about the trapdoor setup here is that 
it's possible to just infinitely upgrade the trap. Well, not infinitely upgrade the trapdoors. It's possible to upgrade the trapdoors to like basically vault hatches, like the type that you would see in like some sort of a like a bank vault. Like that's how huge and like chunky that they can get eventually. And as you can see, the zombies here, they're they're taking their time. They cannot get to me very quickly because that because the uh, um. Because the barbed wire is doing its job. It's slowing them down so significantly. Okay, um, let's just, let's keep using this. There, there are too many of them showing up. I'm uncomfortable with this. You fools. Would you just go away? I mean, I say, would you just go away? It's a blood move. This is exactly what's supposed to be happening. It's just, I, I'm not used to them getting so close to me. But then again, I had better guns every single time that I've done this previously. I have some... I'll be honest, I'm way less well prepared, and it's in no short part because of what happened to me and um, the, the constant search for, um, oh geez, the constant search for antibiotics earlier. So, didn't happen recently, but it did happen. Let's see if I can, can like, maybe conserve some of my ammo. Ow! Okay, maybe that was a bad idea. Aha! You also can't watch their head explode whenever- Oh, for- You- So, this- This particular base design is supposed to be accompanied by, um, an automated device called a sledge. And you place it in such a way to literally trip the zombies and they fall off and they- They have to run back up and around again. Um, I don't have that. This is actually the first time that I've done this base design without that, um, automated sledge. And... I'm- I'm seeing- the problems that it creates. Okay, I'm down to nine bullets, and it's not even midnight yet, so I'm a little bit nervous here. Oh, God. I'm such a bad shot. Okay. Go away. I would love to just use this pipe rifle all night, but I don't think that it's feasible because of how long it takes to reload it. Go ahead and repair that beam. Um... I want to, like, maybe, I don't know, use my baton instead. They're kind of starting to pile up in front of me. I'm getting nervous here. Okay, yeah, you know what? Um, I think I'm going to be able to get more um, attacks in if I go in with the baton. They're, they're starting to nerve, it, uh, nerve me out here. Um, in fact, I've got a little bit of distance here with this, and I, I've actually got way more skill books that helped me with the, um... But they take so many hits to go down. Alright, we'll just keep, we'll keep it up with the, with the baton. Which, now that I think about it, I don't have any, um, I don't have any stone to fix up my spear, so... I, yeah, I'd better, I'd better stick with the baton. Oh my god, there's so many of them! I'm not used to this many of them being right up here. I mean, it's lucky that I got all of those bars. You can try to recreate this shape without the iron bars, but it is, um... It's dangerous, It's and it's not safe. It's just straight up not good. Mostly because, um... The iron bars are crazy durable in comparison to, like, anything else that you can make anything out of. Uh, stop it! Stay away! No! Would you please? So many of them. I want to talk about stuff that's not okay. I'm getting nervous here. I leveled up again. That's nice. I. Whoa, whoa! Wait a minute, man. How? Ah, oh, jeez! I got a concussion. How'd she get through? This is why I came prepared with pain meds. Okay. Oh, oh, no! That's not what I meant to do. Patch it up. Don't destroy it. Okay. All I can do is just keep on hammering away on them. The only alternative is a slow reloading gun. God, that hunk of wood. I've just patched it up so many times. Alright. I don't have any choices. I gotta do something about this. There are too many of them. Let's go ahead and use this a little bit more. Come on. Come on. Alright. I 
I am so more I'm so much better used to the spear, and the distance is really helping me a whole lot. Oh my god. I just realized I learned how to craft steel spears, and I never even tried to find the steel to make it. Making steel is an endgame thing, but finding just enough? Die! Oh. Oh my word. I don't see any other zombies. Did I actually finish the first Blood Moon? I finished the first Blood Moon at just past midnight. Oh my word! Oh, that's an actual- that's actually a really, really good time to make. Holy freaking moly. Guys! Look at this. Okay, let's grab this uh, little loot bag that fell. I'm disappointed to only see one. And that's not really the best loot ever, but it does the job, I guess. But I, uh, I can't believe it, guys. I, I finished the Blood Moon. I came out just fine on the other side, and so early as well. All I have to do now is wait until, uh, dawn, because I learned this the hard way. If you log out after finishing a Blood Moon, but it's before the dawn hits, and you log back in, the Blood Moon will restart. I, uh, I almost ate it really hard once because of that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you liked what you saw here, be certain to uh, hop down to the comments and tell me. If you want to see more, be certain to go down to the comments and tell me as well. Um, I'll only know to come back and do more if you say so. Until next time, though, I'm William Strife, and I'll see you in another video another time. Catch you later.